Now, I want you to think about a question. And I, I know that's not what you expect, but think about it. The question is, do we ever feel the, that the little we do is never enough or that we compare ourselves to others or what they do or how much they give? I know we've probably all felt that way. I have personally, so there's no denying that. Now, let's go to the scriptures. Straight away, we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And if you don't know what this chapter is about, it's about David and Goliath. Now, in this chapter... Goliath, who's approximately nine foot nine inches, challenges pretty much the Israelites to war. He says, hey, any man that comes out here to fight me, like, let's do it. Now, as we know, everyone else is pretty much scared. No one is going out to fight the Philistines. So here he stands defying God and defying the Israelite army. And then comes young David, hearing this Philistine defy God. And it's like, is no one going to do something about this? So if we go to verses 32 and 33, he's here interacting with Saul. And he says, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Now, when I read this story the first time as a kid, I was just like, Oh, we know how this is going to end. This little shrimp is going to try to take down a lobster and he's going to get destroyed. It's going to be like when the Death Star blew up, doom, but with no special effects, but it's still going to be bad. And I'm just like, he's toast. He's done. Right? So we go down and scroll down to verses. Let me get this right. Excuse me. Verses 45 and 46. And after the Philistine, after Goliath is just pretty much calling out David, saying, hey, you're a dog, yada, yada. David's like, thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And when I read that, I thought, this is amazing. Here he stands, giving himself, giving what little he has to the Lord, willing the Lord to use him. And from that point, this shrimp to me became a chosen son of God, someone who was willing to give a little knowing that the Lord would take what he gave and use it in a bigger way. Now, we all remember how the story went. David chose five small stones, five small stones, used his sling, and then slung it at Goliath, hit him right in the head, and did exactly what he pretty much predicted. Now, we, we think about it. Sometimes in life, we feel just like the small shrimp. We feel that the little we do sometimes is not good enough because we feel like, hey, we have to do more. But the Lord loves us for who we are and loves the little we give. If we think about all the things we can do in everyday life, we'll sometimes think about, hey, um, Susie did a little bit more than me. Ah. Or, hey, I have to pay Titan, but, you know, it's so little, but I can use this for something else. But yet, if we just give it, the Lord is more than willing to take care of us and help us along the way. Personally, in my life, I've been a little reluctant sometimes to give a little because I've looked around and I've seen, wow, everybody else gives so much but me. We make it so much about ourselves that we forget that our saviors, they're willing and ready to help us on. And when we actually do give the little, he helps us out a long way. He uses that all the way. Now, growing up, I played cricket. Um, cricket is one of the national sports in Guyana. And honestly, I never I never could afford to get the gears, the necessary equipment to play cricket with. So it was always a struggle to catch up. So every, every time I saw someone going forward, I was always like, man, I wish I was there. But then I'd remember something. I'd remember that the Lord gave me the strength and the talents to play this game. And if I just used it correctly, you know, down the line, I'd be able to finally eventually get the equipment I need to actually play cricket and use what I have. Well, this is a cricket bat. 
It's a nice piece of wood. I know. Costs a lot of money, believe it or not. $400. <laughs> but now I'm able to use the little I have, my talent, to play the game I love and to be good at it, to be better at it. And the Lord, I feel in the same way, uses us and the little we give to help others. Now, let's go down to another story. And this was a story that was told to me a lot of the times when I was growing up in Guyana. It was a story about a young man and he was walking to school one day. Yeah, we walk a lot in Guyana. We don't have cars, we don't have school buses to come pick us up. You know, nobody honks the horn or waits for us, we walk. And he was walking to school. It's about two to three miles to get to school. And as he's walking on this road one day, he sees a man standing at one end, one end of an intersection. And he looks at the man and he wonders, why is he just standing there? Like the road is clear, you can cross, you're free to go. So he keeps watching him, then he just walks on his merry way. Then a thought came to him. A thought that said, turn back and go and help that man. And he thought, but the man is right there. He can clearly see that, you know, the road is clear. You can cross it any time that you want to. So he kept walking. Again, the prompting came, turn back and go help the man. Eventually, he said, I'm going to turn back and go help him. So he turns back. He crosses the busy intersection once again. And he walks up to the man, notices that for the first time, he seems to be wearing dark glasses and has a walking stick. So he says, sir, can I help you? To which the man replied, oh, yes, young man, I'm blind. Can you help me to cross the street? Uh, this was, of course, news to the young man because he was like thinking, oh, so this is why he hadn't crossed the street. So he helped him cross the intersection, gets him to where he needs to go and goes on his way. Feeling good, of course. Now, the very next week, the young man decides, OK, I'm going to take a different route to school. So he goes walking a different route to school. And there, as he crosses another busy intersection, intersection, sorry, he sees an older woman standing across the busy intersection on the other side, and she's just standing there. And he says to himself, "No way, they can't have the same problem. This like can't be happening one week right after another." So he keeps walking, and then the thought comes again: "Hey, turn back and go help that woman." Learning from his first experience, he decided to turn back. He crossed a busy intersection and he said, Madam, is there a way I can help you? Is there something I can do for you? To which she replied, can you help me cross the street? So he helped her cross the intersection and went on his merry way. Now, what can we learn from that? Well, did this young man give up? He gave up his time and technically a little bit of effort on his behalf. But what did he gain? He gained love, he gained charity, he learned it as well. And let's go back now to the story of David. What did David give to the Lord? David gave his trust and his faith. He said, Heavenly Father, if I give a little, I know you will help me with a lot. And what did this young man give? Service and time. And the Lord took the little that he gave to show him, hey, I can help someone else by your small deeds. Now, if we roll down, I say roll, let's go to Matthew 25. We should all know the scriptures, very unique. But we're going to start instead from verses 34 to go to 40. And there this it goes. And then, sorry, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For, why, for I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say, Verily, I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. What that young man gained was Christ-like charity for his fellow man. What David gained was greater faith and trust in the Lord. 
and all this from the little that they gave. Now we think about it. What can I give to the Lord that the Lord will use? It doesn't matter how much. Honestly, when I think about it, no. The first thought that came to my mind was the Lord cares not for how much we can give, but what, but that we do give and that he then uses what we give not only to bless our lives, but also those around us. And honestly, I've seen that each and every single day of my life. The way we know that the Lord loves us and cares for us is the way he blesses us. And he blesses us a lot by just the simple things. By small and simple means are great things brought to pass. And this is what the Lord is doing for each and every single one of us. We don't have to come with a whole basket full of gifts to the Lord and say, hey, use this. Instead, we can just bring ourselves simple and plain as we are. And he will take us for who we are, for what we can give. We don't have to compare ourselves to others because let's be honest, we're all different. But as we give the little, the Lord blesses us a lot. The last story I'm going to turn to is found in Luke chapter 21. And it's a wonderful story. Here Christ is teaching the disciples. And if you don't know the story, it's, it's awesome. But it says, and he looked up and saw the rich men casting in their gifts into the treasury. And he also saw a, poor, a certain poor widow cast in thither two mites. And he said, of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow had cast in more than, the, than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, but she of her penury had cast in all the living that she had. I know for a fact, and I bear testimony, that as we give a little, the Lord will accept it. He will take it and use it. Just as this widow cast in all that she had, knowing that it was the last that she had, but she also knew that the Lord would use it to bless her and to bless others, as we cast in our little or give a little, the Lord will bless us a lot. I I know that for a fact. I, I'm a living testimony of it because from my background and story, I, I grew up in Guyana. I didn't have a lot. I never had a lot, honestly speaking. But what I did have was from what everyone else gave. And I was like really, really grateful for that. So I've learned from personal experience that when I'm willing to just give the Lord a little, whether it be of my faith or of my time or of my service, he will use that to bless others around me and to bless me as well. So that is my testimony. And I'll leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.